not saying I'm a big time Trump supporter. I don't believe in Democrats or Republicans. Let's get that out of the way clear right. while we're talking marijuana. I want to just blaze one. Your color is green, not red yeah, or blue. Yeah, yeah. I, I, right. want, I want I want to blaze one. <laughs> right? Like 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 when can we when can we like like um I remember a girl, a lady getting arrested. Cause she gave her kids some of the when they were first coming with the oils or something. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Welcome to the We Got Problems podcast with co-hosts Curtis G. Martin, Rhonda L. Brown, and Khalif Johnson C. The one and only podcast where solutions get discussed to our community's everyday troubles. Each week, you will hear mind-blowing conversations and actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to become more effective. We got problems and we got solutions. All right, you guys, welcome to the show. This is We Got Problems, the podcast. I'm Curtis G. Martin here with my co-host, Rondell Brown. Hey, everybody. Khalif Johnson, Sr. Peace, y'all. How y'all doing? And Lashika Phillips. Hello. And today we going to debunk the myths about cannabis, about the chronic. Uh-oh. <laughs> about that whizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, y'all blaze one up. Well, it is 420. It is 420. I mean. <laughs> oh. You funny. I'm looking at the clock and had to laugh at what you just said. It's 420 somewhere. <laughs> Hilarious. So how has the historical context of cannabis um, prohibition affected perceptions of its use, use within the Black community? I think, I don't know, the historical context, context of it, you know, being prohibited, I think within the Black community, it's like, especially within the religious Black community, um, I would say that it's, um, it's frowned upon, right? And, and those, in those kind of religious circles or in those pockets in our community, it, it really is frowned upon. I think so. Um, historically, what I what I come to find out in this country, one of the main reasons weeds was weed was so outlawed is the actual hemp plant and the properties that it contributes to this country. Like you can make so many different items out of it. Like if you were to put weed against cotton, <coughs> it'll put cotton out of business. The hemp plant against the cotton plant. The hemp plant is a lot more dur durable and sturdy if you're talking about making clothes. So when you have a competition at hand and you have millions of dollars on how this country was founded through the cotton gin and everything that we were doing at the time, they had to outlaw weed. Prior to that, marijuana wasn't a problem. But once it started being a, a plant that could compete with the cotton, Oh, yeah, they had to do something. It's the same way with um, anise and wine. They had to outlaw the anise plant over in Europe because it was in strict competition with wine. So it, it, it was the same type of comparison to the hemp plant with the cotton plant. So it was a competition more than anything than it just being a natural medicinal herb that can actually do a lot of healing properties and pharmaceutical companies really didn't want to fight it. But, you know, it was, you know, what I remember, <laughs> what along with the hemp, of course, but do you remember the commercials when they used to, it used to like make us look like we was just going crazy. You remember them? Mm -hmm. Like you smoke weed, you go crazy, you uncontrollable, you doing all this and that. Yeah, are you talking about this is your brain on drugs? No, even before that. Yeah, oh, the gateway wow. drug. Because when they tried to call okay. it the gateway drug. Yeah, and they did say it was a gateway drug, but I'm talking about before that. Yeah, know? we used to smoke it, and what do we do? We go invent hunt. things. We figure <laughs> out how to make things better. We mm -hmm. think better. Mm -hmm. Get creative. We tap into another part, and we, you know you, you can't you can't have that. So I think that played a big part in making it illegal. 
Yeah, I, I think you had also some some racial stereotypes as uh, it's gonna make you want to fall in love with a black person. Uh, I heard that one. Um, I've heard um, um, it, it it make it make uh, it hypnotizes you, right? It's gonna make you have sex with different people. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I think um, musicians they they tied it to musicians at one time. Uh, musicians are drug heads. They're gonna be off that marijuana. Um, immigration, um, you, you know, um, Hispanics, they all bring in marijuana to this country, right? Like those type of stereotypes, I think, um, made it bad, uh, you, you know, but what I found is you have more people that will, uh, hide and smoke their marijuana, right? Like, uh, you, you know, the nine to five I have now, um, they do drug testing cause we go inside the refineries. Mm-hmm. So, um, I can't smoke, but so ever since I've been doing refinery work, I, I don't smoke. Um, don't want to tell on myself too much, but there has been times where <laughs> I, I'll, I'll dib and dab. Right. But I, I don't get caught up in the perceptions. Everything is bad if you do too much of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think with me, um, we got to get back to gardening and getting back to our gardens. And when you're in your garden growing natural foods and vegetables and things that are medicinal for you, I think if you're, if you're using it properly, it can be good for you. I think if you're abusing anything that it'd be terrible for you, because I know Mm -hmm. some people who don't function well when they have different things in their system. And that goes from alcohol to cigarettes to anything that you abuse and you get addicted to. So when you're in control of what you're ingesting in your body and any type of medicine, if you're talking about uh, Oxycontin, if you're talking about uh, uh, too much Tylenol, if you're talking about too much Promethazine, all of these things are highly addictive opioids. And if you had a choice for me between an opioid and a natural herb, I'll always pick the natural herb for the same proper healing properties as you will get from the opioid plant. That's just my personal perspective of it. And um, and you can get them same properties from the actual plant itself instead of, I mean, because that's where they draw the stuff from is plants, but then they synthesize it and add this and add that. And then, you know, it ain't no good. To me, anyway, I think, you know, I think we should have been legalized well before alcohol. But again, you could get a DUI for both of them. And I think the sad part about it, it leads into our next question. How has historically, how has the historical criminalization of cannabis affected the black community? The reason why they outlawed it is because they know that it's the drug of choice in our community. Because, you know, when we grew up, we didn't have a whole bunch of pills at our high school. We didn't have a whole bunch of cocaine at our high school. Most of the kids at our school were smoking weed and drinking 40s. If you can get something a little harder from your from the cabinets, you did. But for the most part, that was the only drugs that was at our school. But now you start sliding into some of these other schools. You have Adderall. You have different type of opioid pills and these uppers and downers and things like that then you start getting into the harder drugs where you have cocaine and things like that because those were the communities that they came from but in the ghetto in the neighborhoods that i grew up in they only wanted weed and alcohol those were the only two drugs of choice and they've criminalized it because they knew that was the drug of choice so they had they had a long going outlaw on marijuana forever even though they were going home and smoking it their self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So I, I think how our community has been criminalized hist- uh, historically is, you, you know, you, you can get caught with say like now I think it's less than two ounces you can have in your home or something like that. But anyway, mm-hmm. just say I was riding and I had an ounce of weed. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to jail for uh, intent to sell somebody else go with possession right Mm -hmm. so so now they don't they're not a drug dealer they're just a user so in the court size they can be sent to a program i be sent to prison 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. So so when you when you look at it like that, that that that's what makes it different. Right. Like like if I'm high, um, I got superhuman human strength. You're high. You're having a good time. Mm. Right. Right. So so we're demonized uh, that way. Right. Um, and and it, it's funny how some of the stuff I we, we talk about as a group behind the scenes, I start <laughs> seeing like some some happen in the times and I go like. And we just talking this. I remember sending y'all a post recently. I don't know if y'all remember seeing it because I get to send it so much shit sometime in the middle of the night. But uh, I sent a post where Teddy Riley said that uh, he's voting for Trump. Mm -hmm. And they asked why. He said, man, my brother had double life. Trump yes. let him out. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, hey, Trump let a whole lot of people out on mar marijuana charges that they probably shouldn't have been in jail for life, right? Yeah. You got people that have been selling all this cocaine and did their time and back home. But these people that sold marijuana or got caught using, right? Whatever the case may be, they got all these years and he freed them saying that this is unjust, mm -hmm. right? So, and I remember telling you guys, tell me if a family member was going to say, no, they let my family member out. We talked exactly about that. He let yep. my family member out. Like, man, I'm going to vote for this guy, man. Who Ain't no telling. So so we haven't been able to trust nobody else when it comes to uh, criminalizing us for certain things, right? And then mm -hmm. this man, and I don't know what he was in jail for either, uh, Teddy Roddy's brother, mm -hmm. right? So it might not have been marijuana. So don't, don't think I'm on the bandwagon of Teddy Riley. <laughs> I'm just on the bandwagon of Trump letting people out of jail mm. uh, and then he did a lot of marijuana people so I ain't trying to tie them two together right but mm -hmm. um, I would vote for the guy too right you let my brother out my loved one out yeah I'm you got my vote guy. you got my vote hey look he told us one time before he said black people what do y'all have to lose they've been promising you something for all these years and did nothing I'm gonna do something for you mm -hmm. right not saying I'm a big time Trump supporter. I don't believe in Democrats or Republicans. Let's get that out of the way clear right. while we're talking marijuana. I want to just blaze one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Say your color is right. green, not red or blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I right. want I want to blaze one. <laughs> right? Like 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 when can we when can we like like um I remember a girl, a lady getting arrested. Cause she gave her kids some of the when they were first coming with the oils or something. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and it was helping with his seizures or something. Yeah, and, and, and they sent her to jail. You 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 know what I mean? We spoke That's about that. Not, we spoke that. We spoke about that in After Dark on a health and wellness class about some of the treatments of the babies with the cannabis plant. Like I said, it's the plant itself that's medicinal. You don't have to be smoking this plant. Because that's how most of us know to ingest it. It's mm -hmm. a lot of different ways that we can utilize this plant for different type of benefits, soaps, clothing, medicine. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of different, it's a, dot, a lot of different uses for this plant. And commercially, worldwide, that's one of the largest grown agricultural crops in the world. Because they utilize it for different things and not just smoking it and putting it in a pipe to get high. Because that's just what became popular in the, what, the 90s, the 70s to the 90s when they was smoking on gin and juice. They had gin and juice <laughs> since Snoop came out with the chronic. You know, I think it was probably even before the end. Uh, yeah, I was just, thinking, yeah. It, it, it just that, that's the most popular, that's the easiest way, right? Like, mm -hmm. if we knew how to abstract something from it to like some people boil it and drink the water right like yeah. i've seen people um add it to cookies and different things right like like uh to lotions like yeah. like when do we look at it as being a healing property instead of criminalizing people for it right like like liquor is far more worse I've yeah. seen a lot more. I've seen a lot more death and destruction off a person getting behind the wheel off of some alcohol than I have off of a joint. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's right to get behind the wheel and smoke a joint, but I've seen a lot more death and destruction if you got behind the wheel with a pint of something in your system. 
because it, it, t- it treats your body in a total different way. Yeah. Once it starts attacking and dehydrating your kidneys and your liver, your body responds a totally different way. When it gets into your lungs, the cannabinoids and all of that, and they start releasing the endorphins in your brain, it doesn't affect you the same way. But I'm not, I'm not here to promote marijuana. That's not my goal. My goal is sitting here to talk about it with my team, uh-huh. but I'm not sitting here you know, saying go that. Go ahead I, and promote man. that shit, man, because <laughs> I know I'm going to tell you why. Because one promotes world war, one promotes world peace. Okay. Right. right? Like, it, it, it's, I would rather have the world on marijuana than the world on liquor. Exactly. Let, let me, exactly. Then let me say this. I, I, I've had this conversation with my son. He's coming of age. He's in high school now. And I made this very clear. Like, if you were to choose a drug, and if it, and they call it a drug, if you were to choose a way to inebriate yourself, I would much prefer that you try marijuana than you start drinking. Me personally. I would much prefer for you to try marijuana than you to go to try one of these pills that you don't know if it's laced with fentanyl and it take you up out of here with your first try of it. Right. I, it, it, I would much prefer that you go ahead and try marijuana than you try and get one of these needles and jab something in your arm that you have no clue on how it's going to affect you long term. I would yeah. much prefer that you try marijuana than you put a pipe to your mouth and try some of this crack shit that they out here doing or a, a cocaine or opioid in a pipe or something like that or meth or anything else mm-hmm. because it's a lot of choices when it comes to drugs and what people and these kids are using to inebriate themselves. I've seen them do is what they say they had the spray can and they was sniffing paint. Yeah, they you know what I'm saying? I'm like that. Huffing. Huff, huffing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of different things that you can do to try and inebriate yourself. So my choice, if you decide that you want to try something, you come right here to the house and you do it inside the comforts of your house. I'm gonna tell you, we, we're gonna have to um, not let him do that. We're gonna have to keep him clean because they're gonna stop him from the Olympics, and we want to see that young man go to the Olympics again. Uh, I, I say, I say, I say, I don't, I don't prefer for you to do it. But if you, in your mind, as a young person, want to try something, you do it in the comforts of your own home, and you do it with your parents' knowledge of it, so you're not sneaking and doing it, and it's not a taboo. You know, because when you put a taboo on it, kids are more likely to try something that they feel is a taboo. You know, and, oh, you say you can't, I can't do this. It must be good. That's how kids think. So I don't want to put no stigmatisms on it where, oh, I don't want you doing this. I don't want you doing that. I would prefer for you not to choose that. That's not the route that I'm sending you down. But if you chose to try something and you want to try it, bring yourself home, try it. Get your butt in bed, wake up, we'll talk about it, then we'll move forward from that. Because that's not the route that I want you to go down. But you as a young man or as a young person, you're going to choose the route that you think is best for you. So let me at least let you do it with some guidance and some protection around you so you don't have something laced with something. I had a buddy in high school try some pot up north, and when he went, when he got back, it was laced with PCP. And that that experience right there almost cost him everything. So you don't know what someone else has intended for you when they think you're just trying to be cool or they're trying to invite you to a cool party or they're trying to... Nah, if I was going to smoke, I'm going to do it at home. We don't smoke. We don't drink when we out in public. We always sober when we out in public because we're driving. We're never letting you drive us home. We always have our own vehicle. We always have our own everything, and we're going to make it home safely. So the primary focus is, yeah, we're going to have fun, We'll dance with y'all. We'll party with y'all. We'll hang with y'all. But the moment y'all try and ingest us with something, pass water or Gatorade, we out the door. We don't need none of that in our system. We are purebred athletes around here, and we have futures that we're worried about. My, my house is going to be a little different because I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, – like I got rid of all the liquor in my house, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, I knew at some point the kids would be old enough because I had a liquor cabinet. <laughs> Right. So the liquor cabinet go. I didn't get rid of my tapper, but I don't fill the tapper up no more. So they the most they've seen me drink is a glass of wine when we go to dinner and they don't see that off the time. Right. Like I go to dinner more times now without having a glass of wine. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a little different than that because I'm going to try to stay as drug free as we can, not giving you the doubt that I want you to try it. Right. Like I'm not I don't want you to think I want you to try it. So it's just wrong. Let's stay clean as we can. Um you, you know, there, there is those pressures out there of, of kids mm-hmm. to where you, you want to try to control it as much as you can. But mm-hmm. I, I guess me growing up, 
um, my my favorite cousin that I, I told you guys about before that that I can go get him to do anything for me. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up, he was able to smoke in the house, right? Like, and not saying your house will be this um, trash, but he was able mm-hmm. to smoke in the house. Um, I couldn't. My mom's would hurt me if she knew I would smoke. She'd see my eyes red and she, boy, your eyes red. What you been in? And I had to go through the whole not looking at her. They not red and doing the whole thing, right? <laughs> but it wasn't allowed for me, right? Mm-hmm. I had to definitely sneak and do it. But for my cousin, it was wide open. And right now to this day, I don't smoke marijuana and he's a crackhead. Wow. Mm-hmm. See, right, so. yeah. See, that, like I said, with me, I don't prefer, I don't smoke. I don't drink personally. I haven't had a drink in well over 10 years. Just hey, that's funny hearing Trash say he don't smoke. Bro. I know. <laughs> <laughs> at I one like point in time, <laughs> at one point in time, I did I did um, dabble in marijuana. <laughs> dabble? He said uh, dabble. He called it dabble. <laughs> that means that's it's what? all over him. He dabbed it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but... <laughs> But you know, I grew my own and I grew my own. So it was like I wasn't going out purchasing or going to deal with anybody else. I got in the garden and I provided myself with what I wanted to ingest. So I knew exactly what was going in it. It was molasses, it was sulfur. I know exactly what I was putting into my product. So it's different when you come with the education behind it. So it's not like you're just going out there and we're going to the local pot dude and we're gonna go ahead and pick up a bag and this is what we smoke. And you don't know what they put in. Mm-hmm. So when you burp it and you treat the plant and you go ahead and you dry it out and you do all your own work, it's ingesting something that you know what it is. When you're not doing it that way, when you're not doing it that way and you're dealing with it, like you don't know what they're putting in the bottles. You know that Hennessy has a brand that's been consistent for all of these years. You know that tequila has this brand. It's a uh, uh, Patron or whatever brand. You, um, a drink. Um, What's the uh, a couple of other ones? Uh, um, what's that? Um, Casamigos. You know what they put. You don't know what they. You know what the brand represents, but you don't know exactly what's in that bottle. And when you're ingesting something like that to inebriate yourself, you want to be consistent with what you're putting into your body because you don't know how your body's going to respond. So I say I don't smoke at this current time because <laughs> I, I gave it up. I you yeah. know. It, Hey, I gave it up. I, I, it wasn't like something that I was addicted to. It was something that I, I, I enjoyed. And when I put it down, I put it down. It wasn't for me. Well, I so I know nowadays they're finally getting back to using it for health reasons. And, you know, back in the day, that's what we did anyway. It yeah. was for medicinal use. So now, you know, now that it's getting legalized, decriminalized, you know, it's still not here. But, you know, now that it's getting there, people are using it in the healthcare field a lot more. And it's working a lot better than the synthetic drugs that they want you to pop, you know, two, three times a day that gives you 50,000 other side effects along with it. And then you got to take it the rest of your life along with whatever else they decide to add on to it when you can just use marijuana medicinally. It doesn't have a lot of side effects. The most you're going to yeah. do is probably go snack on something and go to bed. You, <laughs> you ain't going to get psychotic from it. Like, you know, so, so I, I do think that well, as long as these pharmaceutical companies don't try and make these pills and want to add to it, and you know, do that. I, I know, but you know, we gotta that's when we gotta grow our own stuff, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was very, um, I, I don't know, I, I was able to see the medicinal uh impact of marijuana on a very special person in my life i'm just gonna share it it's so wild because some things you think you're gonna take to the grave but it is some stuff it's like you have to share so I, i'm gonna share this story uh it's about my grandmother <laughs> don't put granny and, business out there in these streets <laughs> <laughs> granny, granny been blowing one up. <laughs> but i have to i have to because i mean if we 
if we're talking about debunking myths about cannabis, I think that this very, very abbreviated story is is just that because it was during the time where my grandmother, um, I don't know, I guess her her bring her upbringing was extremely religious. Um, she that was just the woman that she that she was. If you asked her the name of the church that she attended, she was going to tell you she was one of the founding members <laughs> and she was the first secretary. I mean, it was that. It was like that, right? But um, she began getting really ill and mainly having um, stomach issues. And she complained about not having an appetite, just always um, just feeling nauseous. And I just kept hearing her talk about this. And I kept thinking... I know this weed can help her. I know this can help her. And I'm like, she is not going to go for it. So she called me one day and, and I could tell she was in pain. I said, look, grandma, I got something that's going to help you, but I don't need all your extra. I don't need nothing. I don't need no back talk from you. <laughs> She's like, you can't talk to me like that. I was like, I just know it's going to help you. So I get over there and and we were the way the the form of cannabis that I had was in form of flour, so I had to roll it up and do all the things. And she's like, "If it's gonna help me, you know, like why is it taking so long for you to prep it?" I mean, now she's <laughs> like, <laughs> she's getting on me, like hurry up. And so I finally get it rolled, and I said, "Look, um." And I asked her before I came, I said, you know, what kind of snacks would you like? Because you're going to have an appetite after you give, once you take what I give you. I'm not going to have an appetite. I haven't had an appetite in 13 days. I mean, just really so not on my side, right? I'm like, okay. So I brought her, all I had at the time, I think was popcorn and maybe some corn chips. I can't even remember. So I brought all of that over there. She starts smoking. She starts talking really crazy and she says, do you think I'll know when I'm high? <laughs> I think you already know, right? But anyway, long story short is before she could even finish taking a couple of puffs, she was asking me, where's that popcorn? <laughs> Give me those corn chips. What else is in that refrigerator? And it became something that she noticed helped her. Um, and so we, I mean, that was a thing for her uh, up until she made her transition because it would help soothe her. So I was able to have been able to introduce that to her and to actually see the benefits and um, to hear, you know, reports back from her doctor through her that he was seeing a change in some of her abdominal issues. So um, it works. Um, it, it does. It, it works if you know how to use it and you're not afraid to do your own research, because I think that's what it's about. Right. Mm -hmm. There's so many forms of cannabis. People only uh, mostly hear about smoking it. But there is so many ways it can be put in beverages, in various teas, um, topical ointments. I know I was having issues with my knee. Uh, mm -hmm. I use the CBD cream, you know, just for for my knee. Right. So. So, so many ways. So I really hope people do their own research and find what works for them. And um, be careful not to judge because you don't know, you don't know everyone's story, right? Mm -hmm. So and just because mm -hmm. someone smokes weed doesn't make them a, a weed head, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I just, I appreciate this conversation. This is good. And I, I use that one before we get out of here. Um, I, I definitely, I, I, I go ahead and chime in on that. It was an injury that I was facing. I had fell and I jacked my knee up. And when I say jacked it up, I fell when I was doing one of my runs. And the the concrete was just messed all up and I, my foot slipped. And when I went down, I kind of crashed my knee into the concrete. Mm. I, I use a, 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 a hemp-based topical ointment. And it was laced with a couple of other things and it got deep into it. And when I tell you, I could actually rotate my knee again after using it. And don't get me wrong. I tried the Icy Hide. I tried the um, Tiger Bomb. I tried all of my normal stuff that I would use to try and pull the soreness out. Absent salt bath, everything that I was trying. I, f I felt a little better, but it wasn't the same as when I put the cannabis on there. When I put the cannabis topical on there, oh my goodness, it actually felt like the relief of pain in there. And I actually noticed the difference. So, you know, it definitely could be used more than just as Sheikha said, it's from smoking. It's a lot of different ways you can use it. You just got to be willing to step out on a limb and put it into your regimen and see how it works for you. 
Each yeah. person is different. Just be don't be afraid to try it on your own. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I I think people should um look more into healthcare products um from marijuana instead mm. of going the synthetic route. You know, we often know that synthetic route um causes more injuries, causes more ailments um in the long run. Yeah. Right. So because they only treating the symptom. Right. Um, I, I think using uh, marijuana products get us closer to nature. Mm. Um, get us closer to God. Right. I think we're peaceful. Right. Like like mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's just something about those type of products. Everybody <laughs> I know that smoke marijuana. Um, not the ones that's mixing with alcohol. I'm talking about the ones that just smoke some marijuana. Every time I go with my cousins, that's all they do is puff. As soon as I come in the room, they all go. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, y'all? They go, none shit, just chilling. <laughs> Everything's always good. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, so so um, let's be more marijuana users. Let's be more peaceful in the world, right? Guys, yeah. we have problems. <laughs> we also have solutions. And we out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs>From the team at CRC Empire, we want to thank you for listening. To stay connected with us, like, share, and subscribe to the We Got Problems podcast. You can find us on social media platforms at Curtis Martin 247, at Rhonda Wright's Official, and at the underscore trash underscore vegan underscore. We got problems and we got solutions.